Welcome everyone once again to Across the Goal Line, a sports podcast brought to you by diehard fans, Corey Maines and Luke Gossar. And today we bring you the following. We have the last race before the chase from Richmond, as well as the conclusion of the U.S. Open from this weekend. We also have the results from UFC 203 to go along with the results from WWE Backlash, which is the first of many SmackDown exclusive pay-per-views. We'll finish the show today with football as we look back at the previous week and look forward for the next week for both college and the NFL. So let's get things going today with that NASCAR result from Richmond. And for that, we're going to go to Luke Gottesart. What's up, everybody? Um, yeah, as Corey said last week, the race uh, was at Richmond. It was the last race before the chase starts. Um, football's you know, back now, so I really haven't been watching NASCAR. Um, but I still get notifications about the races. Um, so that's how I keep up with it. Um, Denny Hamlin won last week. And this week, they're at Chicagoland for the first race of the chase. Now, the drivers who are in the chase this year include Kyle Busch, who drives the number 18 Toyota, uh, Brad Keselowski, Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick. Kyle Busch is also your uh, defending champion as well. Uh, Kevin Harvick, Carl Edwards, Martin Truex Jr., Matt Kenseth, Jimmy Johnson, my driver, (coughs) Joey Logano, Kyle Larson, Tony Stewart, in his last uh, year racing in the Sprint Cup Series. Kurt Busch, Chris Boucher, who has one uh, win on the season at Pocono in August. Chase Elliott, who took over for uh, Jeff Gordon this year. Austin Dillon, and Jimmy McMurray. Um, now there are 10 races left. Um, you got the round of 16, which is Chicagoland this weekend, New Hampshire, and then Dover. And then uh, whoever... Uh, doesn't win um will go by point system then the lowest four will get eliminated uh from the chase are obviously still going to race though until the end of the season then you got the round of 12 which are charlotte kansas and talladega same thing to go to the round eight the lowest four in points if you don't win are eliminated the round of eight races include martinsville texas and then phoenix and then, same thing again, to go to the championship uh, round of four. Uh, the lowest four of those eight will get eliminated, so your top four uh, will uh, race for the championship at Homestead, Miami, uh, right before Thanksgiving uh, come November. Now, Corey, who are you going to pick to win this uh, race this weekend in Chicagoland? Uh, I'm going to take I'm going to take Martin Truex Jr., He's been great all season. He just hasn't really been able to pick up the win. I think maybe here in the chase that he'll get things together. He'll maybe win some of these races here in the chase, move forward. He might be a contender for that championship at Homestead here coming down the line. All right, I'm going to take Brad Keselowski. Um, He's won at Chicagoland before. Um, You know, he's won a championship before as well. So um, if he can uh, get the win at Chicagoland uh, this weekend, he should be in – being uh he should be sitting pretty um you know till homestead miami uh come november all right that'll do for nascar as we move on to the u.s open for tennis just concluded here on sunday with the men's championship we're going to take you back though to saturday though for the women's championship that was which saw the new number one player in the world, Angelique Kerber, win her second career Grand Slam title, adding to that Australian Open title that she has won earlier this year. And she defeated number 10 ranked Karolina Pliskova from Czech Republic, who made a surprising run after defeating then number one Serena Williams in the semifinals to reach her first major final. And Pliskova put in a great showing for someone playing in their very first major final as she took Kerber the distance going the maximum three sets for a women's match. But she seemed to run out of gas in the end, and Kerber's consistency really proved too much for her uh, in the end there, as Kerber gained the ranking of number one player in the world uh, officially on Monday, but she was slated for that positioning after Serena Williams had failed to make it to the finals in the loss to Pushkova, as mentioned previously so far. So another win for Kerber. She is well the oldest woman to take over the number one ranking uh, ever now as she is just 28 years old. She's old for tennis-wise at least. Around 30 you start getting labeled as old in tennis. Some, I mean, even though tennis is a lifelong sport, you can play it pretty much your whole entire life if you if you can at least as, as your body allows it. I would say golf is another one of those. 
but uh, at least in the professional world, you get around 30, you're starting to get a little older. She's, she's on her way decline possibly here, but she's coming in now in her late 20s, going into the, her 30s, and she's playing the best tennis of her career. And it's coming forward now, and she's the number one player in the world. So we'll have to see what she does. Next season, the U.S. Open was the final major of the season. So she'll be back at the Australian Open to see if she can defend her title there, which she won, as I mentioned previously as well. So good things for the German there. Uh, the men's final then was played on Sunday, as I mentioned that it did end on Sunday, 9-11, which was a emotional day across all sports, especially in football, which we'll get to later as well. A lot of people, a lot of players, they were wearing cleats and such to commemorate the event of that day. And on Sunday afternoon, the men's final, it was a rematch of the 2015 French Open as number three in this tournament, Stanislas Wawrinka, took on world number one Novak Djokovic in what was a pretty closely contested match throughout, I would say as both men played exceptionally and poorly at times, but they still made for an exciting final because almost every single game was almost to a deuce or 40-30 or something. Both guys were winning so many points, it was very neck and neck the whole entire way, but it was Wawrinka who came out on top in four sets, winning more of the big points, I would say, of the longer rallies, the, the bigger points in the match to actually win games and get breaks of serve against Djokovic. Uh, he won the last three sets after losing that first set in a tiebreaker, uh, the score was, I think it was 7-6, seven, 6-4, six, six, and then a 6-3 in the end, as that fourth set was the lone one that was not extremely tight compared to the other ones at least, mostly due because Djokovic had a toe injury that he suffered, I think, in this match, I think it was actually, uh, coupled with his own fatigue that he's had from the entire tournament playing, despite him not playing that much in the tournament. I know I mentioned last week that he had only completed nine whole sets just to reach the semifinals, and he breezed through Gamal Feast in the semifinal to make it to the finals. He didn't really play that much, but he was fatigued, however, during the entire tournament, it seemed, though. But, nevertheless, uh, but that set was won by six games to three, as I already mentioned, by Wawrinka in winning the championship. And that marked his third major title victory for Wawrinka, as he's slowly becoming the face of Swiss tennis. Uh, we always think of Swiss tennis as Roger Federer's thing. He's always been one of the greatest of all time. And being he was the top guy, he's a Swiss guy. He hasn't played that much, though. He didn't play in this tournament, hasn't played for a while. And I think it's been pretty much since the French Open that we last saw Mr. Federer, uh, which is very not really good for tennis, but he is. He's older now. He's on his way out, you would have to think. But we'll have to see if he can make a comeback. I think it's a knee injury that he's dealing with for the most part and why he's not playing. But uh, hope for the best for Federer, at least. But while Rinka, uh, he won his major now. Uh, last three years, actually. The past three years, he won the Australian Open in 2014, his first one. And then 2015, he won that French Open that I mentioned earlier, that he had in that match against Djokovic. And now here in 2016, he has the U.S. Open. So last three years, he's gotten at least one major out of the four. So that's pretty impressive, considering Djokovic has been winning most of the majors here. Uh, just last year, he won three out of the four. The only one he missed was the French Open, as I mentioned. Three out of the four, I think, the previous year as well, 2014, also missing out because of Stan. So, also, Wawrinka, he's been labeled as a big match player, especially by Djokovic, uh, because, and his stats really show it. He's now 3-0 and in major finals, and has actually won his last 11 finals altogether. So, he really, he's a guy that can sometimes lose in the early rounds of a major tournament or a bigger tournament, but once he gets past, like, say, the quarterfinals or so, he is very hard to beat. He's that type of guy who just, like, brings it for the, the best match. He brings it for the big matches. So, it's... It's kind of a weird thing because maybe he might lose in the first round, but it's either he's going to lose in like the first round or the third round or something, but or he's going to win the tournament. Like that's the way he's playing right now. But nevertheless, he's another guy like Kerber that he's like 30 now. He's just getting to the top of his game now and later in his career. So he's another one of those guys, a bunch of guys now. Like the keep tennis is becoming a lot older as a game, you could say, because so many older players, Serena Williams, she's still still pretty dominant in her 30s. Federer, as I mentioned, he's still playing very well in his 30s. Djokovic, he's getting closer to his 30s. While Rinka now, he's coming up through the ranks. He's almost 30 or at 30 now. So, tennis is taking a swing now. The younger guys, the younger generation hasn't been able to break through really because none of the top guys are really fading away as they're, they get older. So, uh, I guess you can attribute that to better training techniques amongst the players and just new technologies, you could say, I guess. So, nevertheless, I think we'll wrap it up there for the U.S. Open. Uh, pretty good tournament altogether. All right, now we go to UFC 203, which is on Saturday night. 
which saw the five fights that we predicted last week taking place, and uh, one pretty disappointing fight, uh, especially amongst us, I would say. L- Luke especially was very disappointed by this fight. I know he told me off air. He told me yeah. about that. But, uh, it was, we'll get into it here in a second. Yeah, it's, uh, it's about the third match we'll talk about here, because we'll start at the bottom of the card. The first match on, at least on the main card, the women's straw mate, strawweight match. Jessica Andrade defeated Joanne Calderwood. In a men's bantamweight fight, uh, Jimmy Rivera defeated Uriah Faber in five five rounds, unanimous decision. Uh, and then this is the fight we're talking about. CM Punk lost his debut by submission to Mickey Gall in the first round. Got absolutely torched, you could say, because right out of the gate, he got taken down in, like, seconds. Yeah, he went in uh, strong, and as you say, he got taken down in seconds. Uh, he didn't... I don't even know how to say it. Uh, it was... He just didn't look. He didn't look the uh, same as you know what he did in uh, training. I'd say yeah, he did lose a fight in training, but um, you know he actually looked better in training rather than this fight. Um, I was about ready to say he didn't look the same as what he did in WWE. He's obviously going to look different. Um, UFC and WWE are two different uh, sports, but the fight was just pitiful and. Uh, Punk's part, in my opinion, and pretty much in everybody's opinion, I'd say, um, he got five hundred thousand dollars for this fight, and Mickey Gall, who beat him, only got thirty thousand dollars. That's only because he won. Yeah, he got fifteen k just for being there, yeah. basically, and then he got another fifteen by winning. So Punk got five hundred thousand just for showing up, basically. Yeah, um, which is kind of a terrible thing when you think about it. Like, now is Punk gonna fight in UFC again? We don't maybe. know. Uh, maybe. Um, maybe not. Maybe he goes back to professional wrestling. You know, who knows? Um, because I heard that Dana White and UFC uh, personnel were real upset um, with how this fight went down. Uh, so, <clears throat> I mean, we'll just have to see, you know, really if he ever does fight again. But this, I really don't even want to talk about it anymore because this, this fight was pitiful on Punk's part. Yeah, he went in too strong, tried to go out swinging at the opening bell, but Gall just took him down, simple, and just beat the crap out of him on the ground and ended up putting him in that rear naked choke for the victory in the end. So, uh, again, that fight, you know, I mean, if you're Dana White in the UFC, you might want to, you would hope, you would hope Punk gets better and comes back because he is, he would be a pretty big draw, you would say. Just oh, his for name, sure. of course, is just a big draw in its own. It's like Brock Lesnar when he came back, like, he's just, just his name alone For is sure. just enough to bring people in. So. His falling is, uh, you know, ridiculous. And you can follow us on social media, too. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I don't know what people were expecting. I don't know if people were expecting Punk to give it all three rounds do really well. I did not think. I mean, he's going against an experienced MMA fighter in Mickey Gall. Well, I don't, Gall you can't expect one your first fight, fight underneath his belt. I mean, he's way more experienced than Punk ever is. Oh, for sure. At this point. I don't. So, I, don't, I, I, I mean, don't when you think about it, like you go analyze it deeper. It's like, I mean, there's really no way you could think maybe he's going to win this fight unless he really did show something in his training or something. But like train, the shooting, the training and stuff. You didn't really, I didn't really see anything that said maybe he might win this fight. I knew, I think he was going to lose either way. It didn't matter. But well, just in the first yeah, round, you, so quickly you though. Him. I mean, it is disappointing that it's just like, just like that, you know matches over I mean that's terrible yeah, it for was, anything it was pitiful I mean you see that time. all the time in UFC though like you have you a do. big fight and then some guy gets knocked out in 10 seconds look at Brock Lesnar his first fight in UFC he got his ass kicked look what he did uh, you know after that he won the UFC championship he wore UFC well, I mean, title it's going to come down to whether Punk uh, puts up with the keeps up with the training, works hard to become great. I don't know. It depends on he's, what he's, he's doing. He's done that all his whole life. Hopefully he does because, it, you know, as you said, he's a big draw. You know, it would be good for the USC. USC would hope so. But, least. you know, if it doesn't work out, he's obviously going to probably go back to professional wrestling. Um, but, you know, we'll just have to see. Uh, exactly. Uh, moving up the card, the heavyweight fight before the main event, Fabricio Wordham defeated Travis Brown in full five round, uh, no, not five round, uh, regular three round, round, three round, uh, unanimous decision. Uh, I, I, guess, I guess most I misspoke about the bandweight fight. Then it definitely wasn't five round. It wasn't a championship match. So yeah. Three rounds. 
Uh, yeah, I'm just getting confused because the heavyweight championship fight would have been five rounds, but it wasn't. He, Miocic knocked out Overeem in that fight to retain his title yep. very quickly. Another man, as I mentioned, the quick fights, just boom, it's over. Yeah. At, least, at least Punk didn't get knocked out, yeah. though. I yes. mean, yeah, I know did, a lot of people did, thought. He, he did might. submit, you know, he tapped out, but, you know, I would rather give up than, you know, get knocked the F out. Yeah. I mean, this is straight knockout, not even TKO. Like, you have to stop the fight because yeah. you're not defending yourself type stuff, though. But, yeah, another my fat was just like, boom, it's over. Yep. You're done. Like, yeah, I know a lot of people were thinking Punk might get knocked out. I think a lot of people yeah. did think that he was just going to get out there and get his ass whipped and get knocked out or something. Might be on a highlight reel. <laughs> You know, Chris so. Jericho's highlight reel. Well, maybe, maybe if, if WWE was really that petty about going. Well, they punk. were petty because are we moving into the backlash right now? We will be. POC? Okay, the Miz Ziggler fight. Yes. Yeah, the Miz Ziggler fight is what I'm uh, referring to. To start the match off, they, uh, you know, did the same thing uh, yes. how the Punk golf uh, fight started the night before. So Miz came in, Ziggler took him down with the double leg takedown. Yeah. I mean, it also plays on the fact that Ziggler was, in fact, a regular wrestler in college, Kent State, obviously. He was, but, you know, that's just... But, you know, it is a little little, little shade on that. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Perfect word to... Yeah. Use yeah. We will go into Backlash, though. We'll right. get into that actual fight. But first, we had the first match of the night. It was the Women's Six-Pack Challenge as Shane McMahon and... Uh, yeah, it was just Shane, right? Opened the show, I do believe. It was just him. Daniel Bryan did not come out to open the show. It was just Shane introducing Backlash and introducing the, the Women's Championship match will be first. I just remembered something, Corey. Before we get into Backlash, do you have the poll results from last week? About I do the, not. I know pump. that people said no. It was, yeah, I remember what it was. It, 71% of the vote was uh, no, do you think Punk's going to win his fight? And the other 29% obviously said yes. So I just want to throw that in there because we try to do that every week. Yeah, I just remembered. All right, back to the women's yeah. six pack. Back to backlash for that, now for that women's ch- championship, first ever SmackDown women's championship. It was won by Becky Lynch, which was a kind of a surprise. I thought, at least in our predictions, it was a little bit. Well, I mean, we, we all we did want her to win. Yes, we both picked Nikki Bella to win. Uh, you know, just because you know it's Nikki Bella. She has a better. Uh, what do you want to call it? Better. Uh, I called it marketability. Yeah, last better week. marketability than Becky Lynch. But then people we know both, her exactly. Uh, she's dating John Cena. She's the uh, sister of uh, Brie Bella, who's married to Daniel Bryan, the GM of SmackDown. Um, but then we both said, you know, we really would like Becky to win. Uh, so we were technically right, but at the same time we weren't. But it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, she wins. but I mean, Becky she, won, yeah. She was the best option for the fans, at least. And, I mean, they went with Becky Lynch, obviously, in the end. And she wins her first title in WWE. And it's probably she's probably the most deserving of the of the women probably oh, to sure. get one for, sure. as for a first out. She's definitely deserving of the you deserve it chance that we've heard so many times. I think yep. they're outplayed, obviously. They're cheering it all the time now. Yeah. They're always cheering, you still got it, or you deserve it, or something. And the fans are, yeah, their chants aren't becoming original anymore. They're kind of becoming tedious, or not tedious, but more just out over outplayed, you know? Outdated? Outdated, outplayed, whatever. Like, it's just too much. They're doing it way too often. They don't, it doesn't really hold any merit anymore, I think, some of these chants, but. Either way, a uh, pretty decent match, I would say, yeah. in the end. I mean, it kept storylines up with Carmella and Nikki Bella. Yep. Carmella eliminates Nikki, and, but it keeps that storyline up. And then we had the number one contender match on SmackDown here on Tuesday, but we won't worry about that, I guess. Alexa As, Bliss won it, though. So. Yeah, she did. So I guess that's going to be the thing. That's going to be the little rivalry for the moment because there is really no one else. I mean, you got, and that championship match will probably take place at No Mercy, Obviously. we're assuming. Um, you know, could place take place next week on SmackDown. Though we don't know. Um, but yeah, you got Carmella, Nikki Bella, Becky Lynch, Alexa Bliss. Only two people, women left on uh, SmackDown are Naomi and Natalia. So obviously, those two are going to go at it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there's only six women on SmackDown. It's a little. It's a little. Um, a little under uh, Raw's. Uh, level I'd i mean say. raw doesn't exactly have that many they do but they're like they they're have any they're better pictures. known uh yeah i guess better say. Superstars, yeah. I'd say. because look at you got nikki bell and natalia and naomi are all veterans you know and then you got the three younger women becky lynch alexa bliss and carmella raw has um mostly all rookies you know and charlotte bailey 
uh, Dana Brooke. Uh, who else is there? Um, Sasha and Nia yes, Jax. Sasha and Nia Jax. And then, but then you have uh, Alicia Fox as well. Um, yeah. They have some veterans, but they're like, they're veterans, are the, they're the ones that aren't on TV at all yeah. anymore. Like, so, I like Alicia Fox. I don't know. They just kind of threw her in, I guess, in that feud. Yeah, whatever. she hasn't been seen in how long. It's great yeah, for her. But back. I think they have, like, Summer Rae and stuff, too, on the roster, but you never see you her. never anyway. see her. Well, Summer Rae can't wrestle anyway. Uh, either way, uh, <laughs> neither, I think we'll move, we'll move neither, on. Neither can Dana Brooke. Yeah, yeah but we'll move yeah. on. We'll move on now. Uh, we have the Usos taking on the Hype Bros in the second chance match to go to the Tag Team Championship final. That was later in the night. And the Usos won it. It was a predictable match because they wouldn't give us Hype Bros versus Slater and Rhino for two straight weeks in a row for the titles. Then, I mean, it didn't make any sense. Also, the heel versus face would have been it's always better that way. Because of the like the almost Cinderella like story of Heath Slater that they're doing or did I guess because it did culminate in this night, but uh, yeah, I mean you said it earlier that fans weren't really interested in this match because I'm pretty sure they all felt the same way that I felt like it's predictable we knew who was gonna win this mm-hmm. match either way yeah we knew it was gonna be the Usos in the end I like I like how they played off the uh, how they won that match though going back to like when they injured Chad Gable they did the chop block and then the the kick in the leg, and then the the submission maneuver to actually win that match. The the Tequila Sunrise, as it is actually called, uh, uh, first originated by Conan back in WCW, I think it would would be, in and in AAA or whatever where he ever wrestled. I don't, I'm not 100 percent sure on my Conan history, but uh, Luch Underground. Uh, he's not on there anymore, is he? <laughs> no, no. Uh, either way, now we add uh, probably one of the best matches tonight, if not one of the, if not the best. If you look at it, we just mentioned it earlier. Miz versus Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship. The Miz won as he continues to elevate himself as as the best pure heel in the company and maybe wrestling. Because period. he's awesome. Because he's awesome. I and, say that every week. And because he... Or every time we talk about it. He's one of the few heels that actually gets booed because people don't like him. You know? Like, people don't like The Miz. You have, like, Kevin Owens. People cheer him because they love Kevin Owens. Chris Jericho, same thing. Mm -hmm. And so many other... AJ Styles now, too. Like, he's getting cheered all the time because it's AJ Styles. It doesn't matter what he is. He's phenomenal. Like, but Miz, like, everyone just hates The Miz and it's great. Uh, I mean, his mocking of Daniel Bryan, only adding to that, mimicking some of his offense in maybe, the, in the maybe little yes chant he did in the ring. Maybe there's going to be a match between those two coming up. Yeah, definitely hinting at it because it keeps it's still going on, even on SmackDown. He still jived at yeah. Bryan on there, uh, especially when he attacked the jobber, James Ellsworth, uh, before the match. He said, uh, I'm the main event. And like, not, It's not kind of how it's going to be, Daniel. And then he hit him with the skull crushing finale on the ramp. But uh, but then Maurice helps him in the end to retain the title against uh, Ziggler, who put on a better match than at SummerSlam, at least. Because the SummerSlam match with Dean Ambrose for the World Championship was nowhere near as good as this match no. for the IC title on Backlash. But I guess you can see why, because they needed to have more time for this match, well, obviously. Well, that and The Miz and Dolph Ziggler are used to competing against each other. They're best friends in real life. Um, you know, they have that connection, you know, to go out and, you know do everything that they need to do. I mean rather than, you know, Ziggler and Ambrose, they're not yeah, they're both from Ohio. All three of these guys are from Ohio actually. Um, but, you know, they don't have that, you know, connection as good as what Ziggler and the Miz do. Oh uh, yeah, also I mean they're both obviously great wrestlers, obviously. Oh the Miz sure. is actually a great wrestler, yeah. if you think he puts on great matches all the time, it seems yep. like. And it just hit this character alone, like it just adds to it and I mean Ziggler has the ability, obviously SummerSlam, obviously, but I think it's also more so that they needed to have this match go on for a while because they didn't have a lot for Backlash match wise, and it needed to go for a while. It only went like two and a half hours or so. Yeah. So they needed to have long matches to actually establish like a good amount of time for this actual pay per view. So a lot of these matches pretty much went for a little bit at least, probably at least. 15 minutes maybe 10-15 minutes at least yeah, all the matches this the match part. was at least 15 minutes I know that and then the championship match for the world title was 20 minutes but then the, all the other ones were about between 10 and 15 yeah so you had to add you had to have all these once you add everything up you get yeah. about two and a half hours you know? yeah alright the, the next thing uh, the weird thing of the night the worst thing of the night you could say as Bray Wyatt Randy Orton no match Bray Wyatt technically wins by forfeit uh, but because he injured him in a backstage segment, 
Orton couldn't actually wrestle because he had a concussion problem. Yeah, so, so they, they wrote him off. Wrote him off. So then it's a he takes Wyatt takes on Kane in a no holds barred match, which Kane wins thanks to Randy Orton. He gets Wyatt with an RKO, and then Chain, Kane choke slams him for the win. I mean, it's a no hold bars match. That's the only like real appeal for that match. But you're talking about a guy like Kane, he's really old now. If definitely for us, so he's out of shape. Compared to what he has, yeah. When he was, compared to what he's younger, been. I mean, you would think you, you can't know, really. He would have lost that match and put Bray also, over, but you know, as you said, Orton came out and RKO'd Bray. So yeah, that, know, that's it's why just, came the match kind of just kept the storyline. Yeah, going, I guess it, you could it say. keeps it going. Yeah, basically, that's all that was. I yeah. mean, it was it was all right. Of course, there's weapons and stuff. There's a table spot. That's about it. But otherwise, not that great. I mean, because those two. Wyatt and Kane, they're both have a similar style, you could say. Big guys that brawl, like it doesn't really mesh exactly perfectly well in a match. If you know what if you know what I mean. I know what you mean, Corey. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else does though. Uh either way. Then it was time for the tag team championship to be coordinated upon one of these teams, the Usos or Slater and Rhino. And I think many thought this was gonna happen in the end anyway. Slater and Rhino win the tag team titles. Heat Slater, baby! And they pick up the victory of the Usos as, once again, it was Rhino that basically carried Heath on his back to win the titles. As it's That's how it's been, been booked, basically. Easy dub. Easy how it's dub. been booked so far. Rhino's basically just... He gets the crap beat out of him. Rhino comes in and gores someone and wins the match, basically, is how it's been going. Yeah. Uh, but they win the titles and Heath gets that contract, which he signed on just on SmackDown here, just last night. So yep. And then they had to defend those titles against the Ascension, which we will not talk about because it was ugly. Well, the Ascension uh, haven't been the same since they come up to the main roster, however no. long it's been. Um, it's just mostly their gimmick, I would say. Yeah, I mean, because so much look, of the pod villains, their gimmick is yeah not very good. Yeah, for and they have the, where the hell have the pod villains been? We haven't seen them since like before SummerSlam. Since they lost to the Hype Bros in yeah. the first round of the well, that, okay, yeah, that too. Yeah, okay, that's right. So yeah, they have been. Um, I mean. Also, because their gimmick is not that great. Either. Yeah, I mean, when you think it about just doesn't, it just it worked on NXT in the lower. Yeah, exactly. It just people, doesn't so. transfer over to the main roster. Some things don't translate. Because then you have to like, because NXT, it's more like diehard wrestling fan more so. Like they love it, but then like yeah. you go to the bigger show, the main roster. There's more casual fans, and like they don't get it. Yeah, they don't understand the gimmick or anything. Um, it's much harder to actually establish a gimmick like that. Yeah, that Ascension roster. Slater Rhino match. The, the one Ascension move, it's going to be on Botchamania, so be sure to check out that. Probably on Botchamania 322 next week. Yeah. Or whenever. Whenever. Uh, Matthew uh, uploads it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now it was main event time. Dean Ambrose took on AJ Styles for the World Championship, the WWE World Championship. And surprisingly, AJ Styles walks away with the victory, at least for me. It was pretty shocking for myself. Luke, you picked him, I know. I know it was more of a personal thing. I, I know that. But uh, I was surprised that they actually let Styles win this match. I thought he would simply lose this match and move on to Cena. But as we know, he cemented himself as the face that runs the place. And, and with the win, despite it coming from a ref bump and a low blow to actually win the match, that's kind of the only tarnishing thing about it. Because they went on for a while, and then low blow, match over, like that type of thing. just kind of... Kind of disappointing, especially since it happened early in the night, essentially, with Maurice spraying whatever the hell it was in Ziggler's eyes to help the Miz win. Probably water. Yeah, yeah it's water on a spray can, basically. Yeah. It's probably water. Either that or whatever it was didn't actually hit him in the face or whatever. So, something like that, obviously, just to make it look like it. Who knows? But, yeah, but he had like a similar finish that earlier in the night anyway, and that, that's kind of a weird thing. It was an alright match in the end, I guess. Uh, Ambrose, I know he put on a little bit of different offense. I I think he did a couple of moves that I never seen him do before. I know he did like a spinning backbreaker type thing or whatever. He caught AJ and hit him with a backbreaker, that type of thing. But otherwise, Dean Ambrose, uh, people were starting to get on him at least in the, on the internet at least about him being kind of boring as a cha- as the champion and as a character and all. Yeah, uh, because I agree. With that. His character doesn't really fit with a face, which is what he's trying. What they're trying to make him. Yeah, heel, he's, he's better as heel. Because he's supposed to be a lunatic fringe, whatever the hell that means. But uh, A lunatic, uh, pretty much. Yeah, but, I mean, that just that's just perfect for, like, you're a crazy guy, you come around with, like, weapons or something, and you just start beating the crap out of people because you don't care, you're crazy. You do whatever the hell. Yeah. You're like, well, I mean... Like, what they're booking him as crazy as, like, he just does weird things. 
Like he like yeah. He just does. Quir- he's like quirky. He's more like just funny, crazy. He thing. is funny too. Yeah. Like that's the character they have for as a face. Like he's crazy funny. Yeah. Like it's not actually crazy crazy. Like they're trying to say he is, but nevertheless, it is AJ Styles, and the era of phenomenal has begun in the WWE. As damn now, right, you're damn right. As the champ that runs the camp. The As he, champ that <laughs> runs the camp is one of the worst, <laughs> worst ever uh, sayings, whatever the hell you want to call it, I've ever heard. So WWE cooked so so up. bland. It's it's uh, it's sad. Yeah. You think they would have came up, or he would have came up with something better? I think WWE came up with this one. WWE. Themselves. Definitely came up with it. Uh, if it was I doubt just Styles if it was Styles thing. coming up with it, it would have been you know, you know the champ that gets all the you know what and you know all this and that and whatnot. Um, because they could I mean, say that, they could WWE. say that over in uh, Japan, yeah. you know, and he could say that in TNA when he was there. He could say that in Ring of Honor. You get the WWE that's a PG show. You can't. I mean, obviously WWE wrote it because I mean, it's obviously the play on John Cena's thing. The champ is here, or whatever. The champ is here slash the face that runs the place. Only it's AJ Styles' version, of yeah. course. So. Of course, it's WWE kind of playing like to that view that they got going on, which is still going on, I guess you could say, because now Cena's in the title hunt just by showing up. Well, that and then you know, oh, I mean, he has been wrestling. He just hasn't been on TV. Yeah, he's been doing live events. <laughs> overseas over in China and stuff um, but as he said <clears throat> on Tuesday on Smackdown you know he's a 15 time champ wanting to become a 16 time champ be, to tie the you know yeah. woo master himself Ric Flair so yeah yeah that's why Cena's in it you know against those three I mean it was gonna happen eventually but yeah well I'd say Styles will retain, and then Ambrose will go to like the Intercontinental title, and then he'll have Styles and uh, Cena at, like Survivor Series. Possibly, possibly, yeah, probably. I don't know. Let's see about that. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Uh, when we get back, we're gonna take a quick break here, and when we get back, we're gonna go into that football. Week two from the college football and then the first week of NFL football, also previewing the following weeks as well. Do you like sports cards, video games, or collecting interesting items? Then Pastime Collectibles is the place for you. Pastime Collectibles is a collectible store in Clearfield, Pennsylvania. Pastime Collectibles sells hobby boxes, vintage cards, Nintendo games and systems, coins, jerseys, memorabilia, and more. Be sure to like Pastime Collectibles on Facebook and follow at Pastime Collect on Twitter. You can contact them by calling 814-762-1410, messaging them on either Facebook or Twitter, or you can even email them at pastime.collectibles at gmail.com. Do you like hunting, fishing, or talking about the outdoors? If so, you need to check out Downriver Outdoors, an outdoors channel on YouTube that brings you some of the best footage of hunting and fishing from the backwoods of Central PA. They also tell some great outdoors stories. Be sure to subscribe to Downriver Outdoors on YouTube. All right, let's get into some football. We'll start with going back to last week for college football. Week two of the college football season is now in the books. And we go to our questions that we did the first week. We're going to keep doing them pretty much every week here. We're going to go through like minor questions, summarizing some of the games as well, along with it almost, you could say. But uh, yeah. Uh, we'll start with the biggest upset from this week. I know there's not like any super upsets, but biggest upset from this past week. Uh, I'd have to say Central Michigan over Oklahoma State. Uh, Oklahoma State was ranked uh, 22nd in the country. They're playing at home in Stillwater, and uh, you know the Chippewas came in um, and you know beat the beat the Cowboys on you know a play that really shouldn't have happened uh, on that Hail Mary if you saw it. Um, if you didn't, uh, you better have been doing you know something uh, something else, uh, like watching another college football game. Um, but uh, yeah, biggest upset I'd have to say Central Michigan over Oklahoma State. As you said, there really wasn't any big upsets. Um, but week two, um, 
didn't disappoint either. A lot of people said it, you know, it wasn't going to be as good as week one. I thought it was. You know, yeah, you just didn't have the, you know, game on Sunday night and Monday night because of the NFL being back, obviously. But, um, yeah, biggest upset, chip was over the Cowboys. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll highlight another one. Arkansas beat TCU, who was 14th ranked at the time. I was out of the rankings. It's, it's not a huge yeah. upset because Arkansas, it has been a pretty much an upset machine for a while now. They have been knocking off teams left and right for years now. Yeah. So, I would say that was an upset as well, but I picked Arkansas, so yeah, I didn't. It is an know. upset in ranking wise. Yeah, in, uh, yes. Like in the name, it is an upset. It's one of those ones that's like, it's not a huge upset. But it's still technically an upset. It, it, technically, it is. I I'm mean, not calling it the biggest upset yes, of the week because there wasn't I, really like. I, I know you're saying, and I agree with you. It's just you know, Arkansas is an SEC school. Yeah. They're not Central Michigan from the MAC. You know, beating yeah. a Big Twelve school. Yeah. So. Uh, either way, well, what about the best game? Uh week? well, if you've watched the Penn State Pitt game, you know, I think you would say it was one of the best games of the week. Uh, Pitt was up twenty eight fourteen at halftime. Everyone thought the game was pretty much over, except for me. Um, I knew Penn State was going to come back. Um, I still thought they were going to win. And then, you know, they ended up losing by a score of 42 to 39. Um, you know, it's one game, you move on, and you beat Pitt next year at home. Um, so that game, there was a shootout in uh, Tempe between Texas Tech and Arizona State. That was another good game. It was on late. And then, game that ended later than that game was Cal and San Diego State. Didn't get over to about 2.30 in the morning. Uh, but uh, Danell Pumphrey, I believe that's how you say his last name, actually saw San Diego State play last year too, by the way. I know I've said that be on here before. But um, he passed Marshall Falk uh, on San Diego State's uh, rushing record for touchdowns and yards. So uh, that would have to be another good game because – uh, San Diego State won by a score of 45 to 40. Uh, Cal me, Cal started to come back late in the second half. Yeah. For me, uh, I'm going to go back to that Central Michigan Oklahoma State game. Because of that last play, like, especially, mostly, I mean, because it's just so exciting just watching that play. I didn't watch the actual game. I got to see that play, though, because they brought it up yeah. at one point. I saw that play. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah, it's right like, after super the Penn State pick game. Got I can only game. imagine if you're actually watching it live or or whatnot, it would be really exciting, especially because oh, we got a Hal Mary here, but this was an ordinary Hal Mary, the freaking lateral Hal Mary. Yeah, like they drew it up on, that way, pretty much on a play that wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, there was, there was a penalty or something that forced a, an untimed down. Yes, and so they got one more chance, and it, they did it. I mean, yeah. in the end, you Oklahoma State, you still have to make the play. Yeah. In the end, and now the refs who called that game in the replay refs up upstairs are both suspended by the MAC and the Big 12 for two games apiece. Yeah, but, I mean, what can you do? I mean, you make a call in the moment, you can't really go, you can't go back on it. Yep. You can, the replays and such, they show that it's wrong, whatever, but you're wrong in this instance, oh, well, you're human. Yep. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. I make mistakes on here all the time, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what team impressed you the most this week? Louisville. Louisville? Yeah. Um, the game uh, was last Friday night up in Syracuse. I actually picked Louisville to beat Syracuse. Uh, I know Corey did as well. Um, Lamar Jackson, the Cardinals quarterback, he is unreal. He's been real impressive so far this season. Um, but we're really going to be able to tell if Louisville's for real when they uh, host Florida State at home um, You know, this weekend. It's actually going to be college game day's first trip to Louisville as well. Um, And then I'd have to say Tennessee, too. Um, You know, just because they knew they had to impress, uh, especially the Battle of Bristol, uh, which saw over 150,000 people attend um, after they almost lost to Appalachian State in overtime the week before at home. Uh, But, yeah, going back to Lamar Jackson, too. He's putting up NCAA... Uh, football um, video game stats in real life. It's unreal. Um, It's something both of us would do in that game. Uh, He has 13 touchdowns in two games. um, Has over uh, 1,000 yards um, total in total offense. uh, Both passing and rushing. So, um, 
like I say, is unreal. We'll get to more into Louisville and Florida State here in a second. Yeah, I, I like Louisville as well. I mean, mostly because of Lamar Jackson. Definitely yeah. putting himself right there in the Heisman race. Oh, He's probably I, number one. Oh, it has to be right sure. now, yeah. He is definitely the favorite at this moment, considering what he's done. I mean, eight touchdowns week one, five here this previous week yep. in Syracuse. Keeps it up. I mean, he's going to be shattering records if he keeps this tight yeah. pace up, for sure. I mean, but Louisville, for sure, I see where you're coming from. But Tennessee as a team, yeah, they did impress, especially considering what they did the previous week. Like, I, I'm adding on that previous week. Yeah. As they are way more impressive this week. Like, because... If I remember correctly, this game was Virginia Tech was in the lead for a bit in this game. For they were up four, fourteen nothing in the first half. Yeah, that's where I was coming. Like they were down. I'm like, oh, here we go. They're gonna lose this game probably. I mean, I did pick Virginia Tech because I thought Tennessee was gonna I did as disappoint well. again this week, but they came up big and end up crushing Virginia Tech in the end. Yeah, so forty five twenty four is the final. Yeah, so Tennessee I think is the the one team that impressed me the most this week. I'd say. Uh, what about disappointments? Uh, I know there's a couple of teams that have, that were pretty disappointing this week, almost losing to low conference teams. Yeah, I had uh, Georgia and Clemson, uh, SEC and a- ACC schools. Um, They're both playing uh, crap teams at home. Uh, Nickel State was playing at Georgia, and Troy was playing at Clemson. Georgia only won by two. Um, after they beat North Carolina uh, the week before in Atlanta, and then uh, Clemson beat Troy by six. Um, so those two teams disappointed for me. They better get their act together uh, before they open conference play. Definitely, um, I'm I'm going Clemson. Weeks. I'm going Clemson as the most disappointing because, especially we consider that what they did la- the previous week against Auburn, they barely got away with a victory there too. I mean, it wasn't Auburn for that game, but I mean, still, this is the home opener. You're the at the time the number two ranked school in the nation college football you come out there and you barely beat Troy at home and that's pretty disappointing you add it to the last week they didn't look that great anymore now they're number five in the nation and I mean they're obviously disappointing they're going down the rankings despite still being undefeated still haven't lost a game so that's I think a big sign of you're not doing as good as you need to be doing and not so much that the teams that overpass them are doing way better than they are but I think it's more of a testament to what Clemson isn't doing on the field right now Especially Deshaun Watson, he's supposed to be Heisman candidate. He hasn't been playing that great. Yep. So we're gonna move into the f- next week here, week three, and we got some big games coming back this week. Uh, last week we didn't really have any of these, but another, I think, yeah, four ranked versus ranked matchups again this week uh, in the college football world. Uh, and, we'll and it's see. only week three. It's only week three. You know, and it's only gonna, there's gonna be a lot more. You know. The end of the season, season for sure oh, for always sure. Yep. the championship games and such uh, last week our picks uh, eh, we, we did the same yeah we did pick different games some games differently but we both went 7 and 6 yeah. in our picks uh, I'm I'm currently at 17 and 11 Luke's at, at a perfect 500 14 and 14 yep. he's getting himself back together here hey uh, it's still early I mean still early I mean the first week as I said I took a chance on Auburn or Clemson which was my big upset, uh, so that really hurt me because I finished seven and eight first week. So I picked Clemson. I'm eight and seven. You know, I'm five hundred week one, and then you know five hundred again this week. So uh, as I said, it's still early. I'm not worried. Uh, I know how to pick college football games uh, and NFL football games, so I know Corey does as well. Um, but yeah, before we get into the FBS, um, we always like to start out with some FCS games. I went three and zero last week. Corey also went 3-0 last week. We're both 5-0 on the year. Um, this week, North Dakota State's playing at Iowa. Iowa blew out Iowa State last week at home, just as both of us predicted. Um, North Dakota State is better than Iowa State, even though they're an FCS team. They've won how many national championships at that level. Um, yeah, they did lose Carson Wentz to the NFL, who, had a, who did a fantastic job uh, in his week one start against the Cleveland Browns. Um, we'll get into that here in a little bit um but north coast state's not as good as iowa you know uh iowa won the big 10 last year uh pretty much got blew out by stanford and the rose bowl but uh you know chris mccaffrey ran all over uh, the hawkeyes defense but iowa will win a much closer game uh than the experts uh think in iowa city come saturday 
I will too go Iowa, but uh, I'm gonna more blowout type situation. More maybe blowout. not a blowout. Maybe more of a uh, late in the game they start pulling away. Okay, type of situation. I, I could see that. Yeah. Um, another FCS FBS game this weekend. You got the Delaware Blue Hens going down to uh, Wake Forest. Uh, Wake Forest is two and zero after wins over Tulane and Duke, but it's still too early to tell if they'll be a force to be reckoned with. Um, and the ACC Atlantic, I doubt they will be because um, you also have Louisville, Florida State, and Clemson in the Atlantic of uh, the ACC. But I like uh, the Demon Deacons uh, over the Blue Hens in this one. Uh, I, I'm gonna have I'm gonna go with Delaware. You're gonna take Delaware, or Wake Forest. Right? I will take Delaware, or Wake Forest. I mean, FCS teams have beaten FBS teams before. Um, you know, it will happen again. You know, in the future. So you know, who knows? It might happen uh, this weekend. Probably the game uh, in in the FCS this weekend is Northern Iowa at Eastern Washington. We both uh, had these we had both these teams, excuse me, on our picks last week. Um, Eastern Washington went up to Washington State two weeks ago and lost. Um, actually, they won. They, I'm reading that wrong. Eastern Washington went up to uh, Pullman and beat Washington State two weeks ago, but then they lost to North Dakota State last week. Uh, then Northern Iowa uh, went and beat Iowa State. So that shows you, shows you how bad Iowa State is uh, if they lose to Northern Iowa. And then obviously they got blew out by, by Iowa. But um, they went and beat Iowa State, but then they lost to Montana last week. Uh, another powerhouse in the FCS uh, and the Grizzlies. Um, pretty much toss-up game, like I said. Pretty much the game of the week, I, I think. Um, but Eastern Washington is playing at home. Um, I'm going to have to take them over Northern Iowa in overtime. I, uh, it's uh, definitely a flip of the coin here. I'm just going to have to go with the home team in this one. I'm going to have to give them home field advantage, I think. All right, that, that red field, they're a lot like Boise State. They have red turf. Boise State has blue turf. Maybe that maybe that uh, gets into the heads of uh, the Northern Iowa Panthers. Moving on to FBS now, Corey. you have anything else to say? Did I uh, no. cut you off I'll before I started there okay we're good as Corey said we both went seven and six last week uh and our week two picks on 14 and 14 on the year he's leading the pack with 17 wins and 11 losses uh as i said i'm not worried the long season ahead of us first game this week it's on thursday night in cincinnati the houston cougars come to town um cincinnati went to west lafayette last week and beat a struggling purdue team uh, Greg Ward, uh, quarterback for Houston, didn't play last week when they beat Lamar. They shut out Lamar 45 to nothing, but it was just for a precautionary reason. Um, but he'll play this Thursday, uh, tonight, uh, September 15th, and will lead uh, Houston over Cincinnati. Definitely. Sixth strength team, Houston. They were going to go in there. They're probably going to absolutely just. D- dominate, I think Cincinnati. Dominate, demolish, dominate, demolish. Bunch of D words that mean you're gonna kill them. <laughs> uh, yeah, Houston, big in this one for me. Yeah. All right, this is uh, the game we alluded to earlier when we were talking about Louisville, as they will be taking on Florida State at home. That two versus ten matchup here. Uh, I am going to take Louisville in this one. I think that Lamar Jackson will continue his torrent pace. Maybe not the pace that he's been on, but I think he still will impress in this game. I'm not 100% sold on Florida State just yet, so I'm going to have to go Louisville here in a uh, uh, kind of a minor upset, basically just by ranking-wise, but I'm going to go Louisville. Yeah, Florida State's ranked number two in the country right now. Um, as I said, college game day is going to be in, be there for the first time ever this weekend. And this outcome of this game will determine who's going to compete with Clemson in the Atlantic Maybe not. Uh, for the ACC. Maybe not, though, because Clemson's, you know, not not looking too shabby right now. So maybe like Wake Forest, as I said earlier, maybe maybe the Demon Deacons. We'll have to see. But as I said earlier, too, Lamar Jackson's just unreal. Um, I don't think he's going to have as good a game this weekend just because um, Florida State's defense is better than, you know, Charlotte and then Syracuse, who Louisville has Obviously. played so far this uh, season. But Papa John Stadium um, is going to be uh, the loudest it's ever been, probably. And Louisville is going to beat uh, Florida State come Saturday. Next game, Colorado at Michigan. I 
love what Jim Harbaugh is doing up in Ann Arbor. Michigan's going to blow out uh, the Buffaloes before they open up conference play next week at home against uh, Penn State. Yeah, it's going to be definitely a blowout, another blowout win for the Michigan Wolverines at home. All right, the next game now is uh, Oregon at Nebraska. Mike Riley, the head coach for Nebraska, he previously coached Oregon State, knows Oregon very well. Uh, he won four times in the Civil War, uh, their rivalry against the Ducks. Um, and I think he's going to pick up his fifth overall win against Oregon this weekend as Nebraska will upset the Ducks in Lincoln. I, too, am going to go Nebraska. They are a very formidable team at home, which is this they will be in Nebraska for this game in Lincoln. So, I mean, with that, Oregon, they're only ranked 22 in the nation. They're not exactly a powerhouse this year. Also, the home field advantage again in this game. Yeah. But Nebraska has been pretty dominant at home. So, I'm going to have to go with the Big Ten in Nebraska on this one. Uh, all right. Uh, we've got the number one ranked team in the nation at the moment, Alabama, taking on rival Ole Miss. Ole Miss has won the last two meetings yep. against these teams. Uh, but it will be Alabama in this one, the number one team. Uh, they're just too damn good. I'm just going to say that. They're just too damn good. All right. Yeah, as you said, Alabama has lost the last two meetings after winning 10 straight. Um, expect another close game as, as Ole Miss has won the last two games by six points apiece in each contest. But, um, yeah, Alabama's just too damn good, as Corey said. Um, I don't think Ole Miss is over that Florida State game uh, on Labor Day two weeks ago, in which they should have won, so... I think that's still hanging over their heads a little bit. Uh, so Crimson Tide, Roll Tide. All right. Uh, a third of the ranked matchups here for this week three sees Michigan State take on Notre Dame as uh, Sparties. I think they're going to take this one, the Spartans here. I'm going to take the Spartans over Notre Dame. Notre Dame's at home, but I'm going to go Michigan State in this one. Uh, I can't really think of a really strong reason, but, I mean, Michigan State, I guess. You're going to take Sparty. All right. Um, Michigan State was off last week after they defeated Furman uh, 28-13 in week one. Notre Dame lost uh, to Texas and Austin in double overtime uh, in week one. But then they beat Nevada last week at home. Um, this game's always exciting. Uh, it's actually the first meeting since 2013. They've played pretty much every year um, since they started this rivalry back uh, in the early 1900s. Um, actually in the late 1800s I believe it was 1897 but then they played every single year up until 1995 and 1996 and then they played every year since 1997 to 2013 until now um, both teams are going to be ready um, but I think Notre Dame is just a notch better uh, than the Spartans right now just because uh, Deshaun Kaiser is you know a level above Tyler O'Connor who he has started for Michigan State when Connor Cook was hurt last year. Um, and, you know, Connor Cook was there for the past four years. Um, speaking of Michigan State quarterbacks, too, I'm going to throw this out there. They've produced some good quarterbacks lately. Um, all of them are playing the NFL. Drew Stanton plays for the Cardinals. Brian Hoyer currently plays for the Bears. Kirk Cousins plays for the Redskins. And then Nick Foles plays for the Chiefs, which got cut by the Rams. Um, but then he transferred to Arizona, so he didn't. Nick Foles did, so he didn't uh, play actually at Michigan State. And then you had Connor Cook, who's playing for the Raiders. Um, so who knows if Tyler O'Connor, uh, you know, will will be at in a few years? Maybe he has a breakout game against um, Notre Dame this week. But I still have Notre Dame, uh, Notre Dame over Sparty. I didn't really want to pick it, you know. I can't. I hate picking Notre Dame in any game. You know, you got to pick Big Ten, but. Um, I think Notre Dame is just a notch better, as I said. All right. Uh, going back to last week, as I said, Pitt beat um, Penn State. They traveled to Stillwater to play Oklahoma State, who lost to Central Michigan. Um, both games were crazy. If you didn't see it, um, see the endings of both of them, like I said, you better have been doing something better, like watching a different college football game. Um, <clears throat> Pitt should have lost, and Oklahoma State should have won. Um, so Pitt will lose this week and Oklahoma State will win this week <laughs> yeah I do have Oklahoma State winning at home this week over Pitt I mean Pitt gave up that big lead to Penn State last week at, at home uh, but Oklahoma State I think they are a better team also Big 12 hey yeah you gotta pick your Big 12 schools Corey um, and especially how can I pick Pitt 
right? A week you after, a week after yeah. they beat Penn State. Yeah. I can't pick them in general anyway, but still, you get my point. Um, next SEC matchup, two SEC matchups. Um, LSU's wearing some throwbacks this weekend uh, as a host of Mississippi State, Dan Mullen. I think Les Miles will be throwing some back, if you know what I mean, after he outcoaches uh, Dan Mullen, um, who might be on the hot seat at the end of the season. Um, he should have left uh, left to go somewhere else uh, when the opportunity came up, but he didn't. He actually was an assistant under Urban Meyer at Florida, if you didn't know that. Uh, expect uh, Leonard Fournette to have a big game. Yeah, I was about to mention that it, when I said LSU's going to win this game at home. Yeah. Uh, I do expect a big game out of Leonard Fournette, get him back on track to being in that Heisman race. He hasn't been that great. First, Well, he was all right. He hasn't been Heisman worthy yet this season. He needs to start showing some of that. But I'm going to take LSU over Mississippi State. Next, as I said, another SEC conference matchup uh, is Texas A&M at Auburn. Two weeks ago when Auburn um, played Clemson at home, they almost won. Um, but, you know, almost won doesn't cut it. Um, A&M did beat UCLA, though, and I think they'll beat Auburn this week. I think they're just um, a notch better over uh, Gus Malls on and uh, his Auburn Tigers. But... Depending on this outcome, both of these coaches might be on the hot seat, or one or the other. Um, you know, so who knows? Next year, we might have new head coaches in both both places. Yeah, Texas Texas A and M. I've liked what they've been doing this year so far in the first two weeks. Big win over UCLA to kick off the season, and pretty dominating performance just last week. Uh, now they're going to go to Auburn. I'm expecting a kind of a close game. I think I think Auburn will be game for A and M. But in the end, I think A&M just going to just be a little bit better in the end. Agreed. Yeah, we all we agree on both of those. Um, next, the Buckeyes travel to uh, Norman to uh, play Oklahoma. O- Ohio State set a school record two weeks ago against Bowling Green as they put up 776 total offensive yards. Just ridiculous. Um Oklahoma didn't look good two weeks ago when they played Houston. Uh, but Bob Stoops is going to have uh, his team ready. Um, but there is that but. Um, Oklahoma always seems to choke big time in uh, big time games. So I'm going to have to take the Big Ten or the Big 12 Corey. Ohio State over Oklahoma. They'll sneak out of Norman uh, with a win, whether it be by field goal, by safety, by one point. Maybe it goes to overtime. I don't know. I'm still picking Ohio State over Oklahoma. All right. Uh, this is our fourth of the ranked matchups for this week. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to into the game now. Yeah, close game. I could see happening. Very close game, of course, with a matchup like this. I think Oklahoma, they're going to play a little bit desperately. They need this win, obviously, to keep any hope of them making it into the college football playoff at the end of the season. They absolutely need a victory like this especially since losing to Houston. Despite Houston playing very well, obviously, and they will continue to, Houston will the entire season, of course, I'm sure. But Oklahoma, I think, will be a little bit more desperate. They'll play a little more desperate at home. I like Oklahoma over Ohio State in this one. Next, we have two rematch games from last season. Um, UCLA travels to BYU, and then Texas travels to Cal. First, UCLA-BYU. Uh, as I said, they both met last year. UCLA beat BYU by one, 24-23. This game um, is in Provo, though, this year. And BYU is improved, but UCLA has improved slightly more. Josh Rosen's looking like a Heisman Trophy candidate at the moment, in my opinion. So UCLA over BYU, but it's going to be another close game. Yeah, it's going to be a close game. Uh UCLA didn't look that great in week one against A&M, as I mentioned previously, that game at least. Uh, BYU, they looked all right this season. They made a poor decision last week against the Utes. Yeah. But uh, it's going to be a close Should've game. It's, a, it's a kind of another coin flip type of game, just like kind of throw something at a dartboard, see whatever you yep. pick, you know, type thing. Uh, I will go with UCLA over BYU, though. In the end. Yeah, and I, I mean, I can't pick BYU. I mean, they, they've... Uh, 
screwed me the past two weeks. I picked against them in week one, and mm-hmm. then they won, and then I picked with them last week, and then they lost. So I got, I got to pick against them. Um, yeah, UCLA is better than Arizona, who they beat, and then UCLA is obviously better than um, Utah, who they uh, lost to last week. I just noted, I realized, too, their first three games are playing all Pac-12 schools. Um in Arizona, Utah, and UCLA. So maybe, you know, there's that talk about conference realignment again. I would really like to see BYU in the uh, Big 12, but, you know, BYU's playing all these Pac-12 schools. Maybe they go to the Pac-12. Who knows? Uh, speaking of the Pac-12 and the Big Te- Big 12, Texas from the Big 12 travels to uh, Cal from the Pac-12 in another rematch of last season, as I said, and another game that was decided by one point. Uh, Cal beat Texas in Austin last year uh, when Texas missed an extra point at the end of regulation and almost sent the game to overtime. But as I said, they missed it, and Cal won. Uh, Jared Goff, who plays for the Rams now, had a fant- had a phenomenal uh, game uh, in, this, in this game last year. Should be another exciting game. Texas is, you know, notch better, though. <clears throat> you know, they're ranked in the top 12. Cal does have Davis Webb, their quarterback, um, transfer from Texas Tech. Um, and, you know, this should be another great weekend in college football, Corey. Um, but Texas over Cal in this matchup. I, too, am going to take Texas. They have <coughs> much improved from last season, that's for sure. I mean, they were not very good last season. Charlie Strong, he's still in the hot seat, you, yeah. can, you could argue. But I think it's cooling off a little bit the way they're playing now. If they can keep this up, he's going to be he's going to be still have that job for a, a little bit longer yet. So I'm going to take Texas over Cal in this one. Just uh, And we'll move on to the NFL now. Yeah. As we move on to the NFL, week one has concluded. A lot of close matchups this past week. But, Luke, uh, do you see any upsets? What was the biggest one? If there was even one, you could argue in the NFL. Yeah, week. i got to go to... Uh... Glendale, Arizona, uh, with New England beating Arizona. No one thought, <clears throat> especially for both of us, that the Patriots would beat Arizona without Tom Brady, and they did. Um, Arizona missed a field goal late, and you know that secured the win for the Patriots. So biggest upset have to be the Patriots or the Cardinals. Yeah, if there is an upset, you could say Patriots or Cardinals. <coughs> no, almost no one was giving the Patriots a chance. I will say that. I, I knew that Patriots probably would be keep it close or something. I didn't know they were going to actually win, though. I yeah. did not think they would actually win this game. Because, of course, the Belichick system, it just works. It doesn't matter who you throw in a quarterback, almost. It just seems to work. I mean, look at the year Brady got hurt. Castle Matt Castle came in. Of all people, Matt Castle. And he went in there, and they made, they did well. I mean, they did. But now look at him. He doesn't do crap. He's not even a starter anymore or anything. He still he tried play- to He tried to move on after that season did nothing. He still plays, though. Yeah. He just hasn't done anything yeah. meaningful, really. I mean, he started for the Vikings or something, and then he yeah. started for the Cowboys, I think, last year it was. At what yeah, point? He, his, his road after New England, he signed with Kansas City, and then they traded him to Minnesota. Because they got Alex Smith. Because Kansas they did, did get Alex Smith. And then um, Minnesota traded him, or he signed in Buffalo, and they didn't even play in Buffalo. They traded him to Dallas at the start of last season. And then everybody knows what happened with Tony Romo, who might not ever play again in the NFL, depending on how Dak Prescott plays the rest of the season, or you know plays the rest of the time he's able to start if Romo does come back this year. Um, and so yeah, he started in Dallas some last year, and then he signed with uh, Tennessee in the off season. But he's not going to start over Marcus Mariota unless Mariota gets hurt. So yeah. That's that's the story with Matt Castle. <laughs> yeah. Matt Castle. But, yeah, bringing it back, that's the only real upset I really see for this yeah. week, though. Patriots over Cardinals. Uh, either way, what's the best game, though, in a, as a whole, do you think? For you, at least, I guess. Both games that were on Fox. Um, one of them we got around here. The other one we didn't. We saw highlights, so. Um, the game that I watched was the Packers-Jaguars. I actually picked the Jaguars to win. They did not win. They lost 27-23 um, because they made a bonehead, bonehead call on fourth and one. They ran a little bubble screen um, to Alan Hearns. Uh, so the game before that, though, was uh, exciting. Uh, you know, the rest of the play before that was exciting. 
Um, so that's one of the best games. And then the Raiders Saints, um, the game that wasn't on around here. Um, Jack Del Rio had some balls to um, go for two there and for the win. Um, who knows? I might have went for two if I was coaching. Maybe Corey would have too. I don't know. Um, but that game was real impressive. I actually picked the Raiders, so I was happy. Yeah, I did too. Over yeah. your Saints, I don't know how you pick against your own team, but uh, because I just realized, I guess <laughs> I, I just uh, I just accept the fact that their defense is awful, and it's going to cost them a lot of games. They need to hire Rob Ryan back, Corey. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, for me, I mean, I'm I'm going through the I'm going through the list in my mind right now. The Chiefs versus Car- Chargers game was pretty amazing. The comeback to the Chiefs. Yeah. 21, in overtime, winning 21 in overtime. Unanswered. 33 to 27 in overtime. Very impressive by the Chiefs. I mean, also disappointing because they almost lost the Chargers, who are not that great. Yeah, and now the Chargers are probably going to, you know, take a hurt. And they lost Keenan Allen for the season with a torn yeah, ACL. Lost their best receiver. Um, they do, have, they, do, sort of they do have Travis Benjamin, though, so he'll take over for that number one role. They do have Antonio Gates still, Melvin Gordon. Um, so maybe the Chargers are all right, but you know you're going up against the defending Super Bowl champs in Denver. Kansas City is still looking strong, and then Oakland, who I picked to win the West, is looking uh, pretty good so far. But it still is Week One, so anything can happen. Yeah, I mean maybe that's just a lull for the Chiefs because I have the Chiefs winning the division in the end. Yeah, continuing what they did last year. Um. Now, what team would you say was most impressive and also disappointing at the same? Also, the team that impressed me, uh, I have two. Would be Denver, who I did pick um, over Carolina, and they won twenty-one to twenty. It's actually the first time ever in NFL history, too, by the way, that uh, three teams uh, won by one point on uh, in Week One. Let me see if I can find that stat here for you folks. Yeah, here it is. Uh, yeah, it's the first time in NFL history that three games were uh, in week one were decided by exactly one point. The Broncos beat the Panthers 21-20. The Bengals beat the Jets 23-22. And then the Raiders defeated the Saints 35-34. Uh, but yeah, Denver, like I said, I picked them, but no one really thought they could have beat the team that they beat in the Super Bowl. Um, you know, because they don't have Peyton Manning anymore. Uh, so... Denver and then uh, New England, who I didn't pick over Arizona uh, because no one thought they could have won without Tom Brady, but they did, as I said. So uh, Denver and New England, uh, impressed, disappointed. I don't think anybody really disappointed, in my opinion. It's week one, like I said, folks. Calm down um, if your team lost. But if you're a Cleveland Brown fan, you know, you're not fine. All right. Uh, for me... They lost RG3, so... Yeah. For me, a team that kind of impressed, despite losing, was the Cowboys, because I didn't expect Dak Prescott to be that do that well in his first NFL game, regular season NFL game. Uh, almost won the game. Probably could have won that game if Terrence Williams, Terrence Williams got out of bounds. They might have won that game. Maybe. And, it would have been about a 62-yard field goal. For Dan he is Bailey. the most accurate kicker in football. Dan he Bailey. is, and but. the game was inside. If it was up in East Rutherford, he wouldn't have made it. If they, if that would have happened, but. they would have had a the Hail Mary chance, possibly anyway. As Maybe. Well. So, but still, you're talking about. I mentioned it last week. Basically, having two rookies running your offense for you, and they yeah. almost beat the Giants. But I mean, the Giants aren't the best team in the football. But no, I mean they do have a first year head coach in Ben McAdoo, though. So I mean that is a reason why. But they do have Eli Manning. They do have you know, Eli. I mean, McAdoo's Peyton's been in the system brother. the whole for forever, pretty yes. much, for the Giants for since Tom Coughlin basically came in. Yes. So, but now he's gone. Now he's moved up. But I mean, the Cowboys. I like what they did. I mean, despite losing, I do like what they did. Disappointing wise, I mean, I have to look at the Seahawks just winning by two points against the Dolphins at home. Uh, it's very disappointing. I mean, you're, you're talking about the Seahawks who have the most raucous crowd. Twelfth man. The twelfth man in Seattle, the probably the worst place to play in NFL. Probably, probably taking over for what was Arrowhead Stadium for the Chiefs. That's always been a bad place. Both of them are tough places to play. Um, but 
nevertheless, I mean, you barely beat a team in the Dolphins who have been always underwhelming so lately, especially. It seems like every year, like, oh, the Dolphins look really good on paper, but then they just are crap in the end. But, they haven't been relevant since they had Dan Marino as their quarterback. You know, basically. And that was how long ago? Yeah. Um, 16 years, I believe. But you have... Um, I'd have to agree with that, too. You, you have know, the Seattle, Seahawks. Seattle that, did disappoint a little bit. They're projected to possibly win the West. Also, Will, Russell Wilson, he didn't look that good either. He's supposed to be a pretty top-level quarterback and whatnot. Didn't look that great without Marshawn Lynch. I mean, in that backfield. He is a difference maker. Who wants like. to come back and play again... He said it like five times in the offseason. He wants to come back and play. But as I said, it's week one. Yeah. Just calm down, unless you're the Cleveland Browns, you know, because uh, the Browns are going to suck. Yeah. They did look all right, you know, with RG3 there until he got hurt, you know, and then uh, after that, it just went downhill again. But yeah. Yeah. All right. We move on to week two now. As first week, uh, Neither of us did particularly great. Uh, Luke went 5-4, I went 4-5, and five, so yep. we're both hovering around the 500 mark at the moment. Uh, Luke's north and I'm south of it, but nevertheless, we got a slew of games for your week two here. We'll start with that Thursday night game. This is tonight. The Jets take on the Bills in Buffalo. I'm going to go with the Jets again. I picked them last week, lost to the Bengals by one, shockingly for me. I mean, I thought the Jets would be really dominant this year, but... I like them against the Bills in this game. Yeah, both teams lost last week, as he said. Uh, the Jets lost to the Bengals by one, and then the Bills lost to the Ravens by six. Um, first game of the year for the color rush jerseys. Um, so I'm going to have to take uh, Gang Green over uh, Rex Ryan and his old uh, – well, Rex Ryan did coach the Jets. Um, yeah, so – Take the Jets over the Bills, who he coaches now. All right. All right. Next game is another another Steeler game, Luke. We're yeah. Pick some Steelers here. As the Bengals come to town for this first Steelers home game. Uh, I'm going to take the Bengals, keeping to my rule of not picking the Steelers. That's the only reason, really. <coughs> That's the only reason I can give you. I don't really need to say anything, Pittsburgh. Yep, obviously. Steelers, not Pitt. Yeah. Uh, next game I have down, Chiefs taking on the Texans in Houston. Uh, I'm going to go to the Texans at home. Uh, I already mentioned that I didn't like what the Chiefs did last week. They didn't look that great. It's a rematch from last season playoffs. The Chiefs took on the Texans. Blew them out. Though. They did. But maybe a little different. Texans are looking pretty good this season. Just uh, won the first week here against the Bears. Uh, Lamar Miller looked good in his debut. Osweiler, eh. I mean, pretty much what you would expect from Brock Osweiler. I think he's not going to be a superstar. I don't no. think, but the average quarterback, he did just fine. Will Fuller, though, rookie wideout, out, he looked great. Good fantasy pickup for anybody who doesn't have him. I drafted him. I believe in him. Yeah, I mean, I believe in him. Just yeah. like Bill O'Brien does. Yeah, so I'm going to have to go with Texans. Their defense is good. They have, you add Will Fuller to DeAndre Hopkins, they got a good wideout core there. So They do. At Spe- home, Texans. Speaking of Will Fuller, I think I said this on here before when we did a football preview. Will Fuller actually committed to Penn State when O'Brien was head coach, and then, um, decommitted when the sanctions hit and then went to Notre Dame but then O'Brien's obviously the head coach and he's so now he drafted them so in the first round so they're reunited um it's actually the third time the te- the Chiefs have visited the Texans since the beginning of last season they opened the season uh last year in Houston and they played each other in the wild card game as you said in which Kansas City blew them out they actually won both of those meetings last year but third time's a charm uh for those Houston Texans so I'm going to take uh, Billy O'Brien and the Houston Texans over to Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, next game uh, with your favorite team, Corey, the New Orleans Saints. Uh, they're going to East Rutherford to play the Giants. Both teams had one-point games last week. Saints lost by the Raiders after the Raiders went for two, uh, 35-34. And the Giants beat the Cowboys 20-19 uh, to because Terrence Williams wanted to get out of bounds, as we've mentioned already. Um, and then let Dan Bailey try a game-winning field goal, which would about been about 62 yards. <clears throat> but the Cowboys were better in that game uh, than the Giants. Last year, actually, too, these two teams met down in New Orleans, um, and New Orleans won 52-49. to um, But this year um, is a different year, obviously. Um, 
I wouldn't be surprised if we still have another high scoring game, um, but I'm going to take the Saints. Uh, no. I'm no? I'm going Giants. I'm picking against the Saints a second straight week. Wow. Uh, a big reason it's on the road. The Saints have perennially been very poor on the road. I'm talking about going to New York here. The Giants, their defense has gotten a little bit better, I would say. They're not going to give up 52, I don't think, to the Saints at home, despite the fact Drew Brees is still very much good. He is did play great last week, four touchdowns over 400 yards. Uh, he's all-time, 300 passing yard games. He's slowly becoming, stat-wise, best quarterback in football, period. Stat-wise, at least. Uh, but I like the Giants over the Saints. It, the Saints are not good on the road. Their defense is still pretty poor, especially from last week. Gave up 35 to the Raiders, and now you have to take on Eli Manning with that pretty good wideout core with Victor Cruz. He scored last week. He's back into the fold. Odell Beckham, now Sterling Shepard, who scored also last week. So As I said times. last week, look out for Sterling Shepard to have a big game. He had a decent game. <clears throat> yeah. Next game, though, we're going to pick is a low-key game of the week, in my opinion. As the Cardinals look to avenge the loss last week against the Patriots, they're at home. Excuse me, they're at home again against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, uh, and I think they will avenge that loss and beat Jameis uh, Winston uh, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, the Jameis joke is uh, something between uh, me, Corey, and a couple of our uh, other friends. Yeah. Uh... This is a game that, yeah, I mean, especially after last week with the Cardinals losing to the Patriots and then the Buccaneers defeating the Falcons pretty impressively with four touchdowns from Jameis Winston. It, it does seem like a pretty good matchup here. Uh, I'm going to have to go Cardinals. I'm going to stick with the Cardinals. I picked them last week. I'll pick them again this week at home. Uh, but this is a game. Don't be surprised if the Bucks come out and shock us all and beat the Cardinals here. So Yeah, as I said, it's a low-key game of the week in my opinion. It's a 4-5. Probably going to be on Fox. Yes. Not around here, though. Yeah. Uh, another game. This is a game that definitely is low-key not going to be good. It's going to be just <laughs> not good, probably. As the Seahawks travel to L.A. to take on the Rams. And the only reason I'm including it is because it is the first L.A. home game, really. Yeah. It's it's probably... It shouldn't be a good game, unless the Seahawks play like they did last week against the Dolphins. But the Rams look putrid against the Niners, getting shut out against the Niners on Monday Night Football. Very boring second of, of the two games there. Yeah, if I could quote Jeff Fisher, if you watched Hard Knocks, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, the Rams looked like that 7-9 bullshit team that Jeff Fisher always says. So, well, like this past week in San Francisco, as they got shut out. The uh, best part of that game was when that fan ran onto the field. Um, if you haven't looked up, uh, or if you haven't looked it up or you didn't see it, um, you know, you need to look up Kevin Harlan's radio call for it. Um, you can actually check that out on my Twitter page. I retweeted it. So it, it was, it's real funny. But, yeah, the Rams looked like that 7-9 bullshit team that Jeff Fisher says they looked like all of last season. Um, so, yeah, it is the first game, regular season uh, game in L.A. The Rams haven't actually scored a – the L.A. Rams haven't actually scored a point in 22 years. That's another stat for you. Um, but yeah, as Corey said, the only reason why we're picking this game is because it's the first LA home game. But Seattle did look bad last week against Miami, but they're obviously going to be better than um, LA this week. Hopefully, Todd Gurley does have a good game for LA, though, but I'm taking Seattle. Yeah, it's definitely Seattle the whole way. Uh, it's enough about that. As we move on to what will be the game of the week, you could say it'll be on CBS. Uh, Colts take on the Broncos, and this is a game where I think that the Broncos are going to win because the Colts' secondary is not that great. Uh, Trevor Simeon will be able to pass against them. He was able to do it against the Panthers' pretty low secondary that they got going on now. They'll be, he'll be able to exploit the secondary of the Colts, and their defense will be good enough to shut down Andrew Luck in that pretty high-powered offense. Uh, it's another one of those games, much like last week, where it's like the Broncos' defense will do enough just to get the win, and Simeon will also do just what he needs to do just to win the game, basically, I think. Yeah, it's a matchup between Peyton Manning's two former teams, you know, Indy and Denver. Um, this game is actually, you know, uh, what I want to say, um, a real good matchup uh, every single time they play. As you said, Corey, uh, 
Uh, it's the game of the week. It's on CBS at 425. Um, normally, it's, you know, New England and uh, Indy or Denver and Indy. So Indy always seems to be in the mix, but it's going to be different because Peyton Manning's not playing um, for either team anymore. Obviously, he's retired. Um, the Broncos did look good last week, um, but Andrew Luck seemed to be uh, back in his prime as he was about two years ago now because he was hurt most of all last season. Um, the game is in Denver and mile high. Um, these two teams met last year in Indy, and Peyton Manning to return to Indy. Um, and the game came down to the wire. Um, but uh, this year... Um, and then I think the year before that too, um, Indy traveled to, yeah, Indy played in Denver, uh, in the AFC divisional round and, uh, won, I believe if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, because then they went up to New England the following week, lost in the, in which was the start of the flight gate. Uh, and then New England went on to win Super Bowl 49 or Seattle. Uh, but in this game, um, since Andrew Luck's looking better, I think he'll outplay uh, Denver's uh, quarterback and Trevor Simeon. Both of these guys have taken over for Peyton Manning as well. All right. Uh, the Sunday night game this week is the Packers taking on the Vikings in Minnesota. I'm going the Packers. They are uh, what should be a pretty dominant team this entire season. Vikings didn't look exactly super impressive last week. Their defense helped them out a lot, mostly last week. Yeah, they scored, what was it, 25 unanswered? Some, yeah, 20, something like that. It was 22 or 25 yeah, against The offense Tennessee. did not look good with Sean Hill under no. center. A- AP did not do much against the Titans either. No, he did not. So I'm going to have to go Packers in this one. Yeah, I'm going to also have to take the Green Bay Packers. Um, Minnesota's opening their uh, new stadium uh, for the first time during the regular season, they did have they did play preseason games there, but you know no one really cares about those. Um, but yeah, Green Bay looked looked good last week against Jacksonville. Jacksonville gave them a run for their money. I obviously picked Jacksonville to beat them, but uh, I'm gonna have to take the Packers over the Vikings this week. All right, and then the Monday night game sees Philadelphia going to Chicago. Uh, I'm going to go Philadelphia. I think Chicago is one of the worst teams in the NFL this season. I think they will be at least. Wentz looked pretty good against the Browns. I know it is the Browns. Anyone can look good against the Browns pretty much. But he did look all right. Did Played pretty well. I think he'll beat the Chicago Bears in this one. I also have to agree with you on that, Corey. Yeah, as you said, Wentz had a good game last week. He had two touchdowns, threw for about 275, um, had 22 completions. Uh, but... Uh, you know, the Bears' defense is just um, not the same as what it's been in uh, recent years. Uh, so, Eagles. Eagles big over the Bears. Mm. All right. Moves us to our question of the week this week. And we're going to kind of revisit a question we had two weeks ago when we talked about Colin Kaepernick sitting for the National Anthem. More, more players are starting to do that now. More guys are starting to protest with the fists in the air now. Different form of the protest at least instead of kneeling for the national anthem they're standing for it but they're putting the fists in the air as a uh, kind of a unification of black power you could say uh but the question of the week this week is how much longer do you think these protests like this are going to keep going well hopefully not longer you know because it's just a disgrace to america and the national anthem so i know they are u.s citizens but And they do have the right to, you know, say what they want and do what they want. You know, it's freedom of speech. But, you know, hopefully it ends soon. Uh, It probably won't, though. I think, think, you know, deep down it probably won't. Probably not. Uh, I think this might go on the whole season for the most part. Uh, I'm not sure about... I think that maybe the kneeling and sitting for the National Anthem might end. But I think the fists in the air are going to continue to go on for a while. Because it's not... It's more of an appropriate form of the protest that Colin Kaepernick started with against black oppression, you could say. It's more appropriate because you're still standing for the national anthem. You still have the heart, hand over the heart for the national anthem. They just have that fist in the air. Like, that's a more appropriate way of doing it, if you, like, you know what I mean, obviously. I know you mean. So, that's what I think about it. So, that's where we're going to wrap it up here for this week on Across the Goal Line. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Like us on Facebook. 
Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at, at ATGL16. All of those links available in the description of this video. Answer that question of the week on Facebook or Twitter by voting in our poll, which we won't have a poll this week. It's not really a... We can't really add a poll for this one. Not really, unless you just add times for it. But uh, you can follow Luke at CoinLuke96 on Twitter and me at CAMAX14. I guess I can do a poll. I mean, I can say, you know, sooner, sooner or later. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll see. You'll see. Everyone will see, I guess. Uh, also, don't forget to buy our merch, which you can contact us about using all the social media platforms or emailing us at across the goal line 2016 at gmail.com. And for Luke, I was starting Corey Mains, and we will see you on the next edition of Across the Goal Line live from the field.